Camp Randall Stadium began its life of historical relevance during the Civil War as a training camp for Union soldiers. In 1895, the Badgers began to call the location home for football games, and through expansions and renovations, it has remained that way ever since. College football possesses a pride and nostalgia unrivaled by other sports featuring venues that have stood the test of time and serve as cathedrals to the game. One of those venues can be found at the University of Wisconsin. Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin has been home to the Wisconsin football team for over a hundred years. Located in the heart of the state capital of Wisconsin, Camp Randall sits on the iconic isthmus between Lake Mendota and Lake Monona and has hosted state fairs, races, and other community events right where the present day stadium rests. Whether it's earning first place in a harvest competition at the state fair, maintaining national unity during wartime, or providing a place for the Badger faithful to come together for a homecoming football game, Camp Randall has been a place for Wisconsin to win. When a football program has the support of the surrounding community, a lively student section, and success on the field the way that Wisconsin does, the atmosphere is sure to be top-notch. Fans of all ages are interested in the game and knowledgeable of the product on the field. The location of the stadium adds to the atmosphere. The urban setting and involvement of the Madison community add a sense of importance and seriousness to the product on the field. Prior to being transformed into a football stadium, the 50-acre plot bounded by University Avenue, Breeze Terrace, Monroe Street, and North Randall was owned by the Wisconsin State Agricultural Society. The site was used for agricultural purposes and expositions, including the Wisconsin State Fair. For the first 10 years of the fair, Madison shared the responsibility of hosting the fair with three other cities. The fair was held 11 times at Camp Randall between 1858 and 1885. If there's one thing you need to know about Wisconsin, it's how much they love to eat and drink. In addition to beers and brats, these cheeseheads love their cream puffs. The Wisconsin State Fair sells about 350,000 of them during the 11 day event every summer. From 1861 to 1865, roughly 70,000 enlisted men came through the Camp Randall complex, nearly as many people as what fills the stadium on game days today. Camp Randall differed from many Civil War training grounds because it was used temporarily as a Confederate prisoner of war camp. At the end of April 1862, 1,400 Confederate soldiers were brought back to Camp Randall. Camp Randall received little notice of these captured Confederates and was subsequently under-equipped to accommodate such a volume of prisoners. Despite the conditions, Camp Randall was able to provide reasonable conditions for the captives. Arriving Confederates received medical care and regular army rations supplemented by provisions such as fresh milk, tobacco, all donated by the Madison citizens. Despite the best efforts, U.S. Army officials deemed camp conditions unsuitable for the prisoners. Conditions of the afflicted prisoners worsened. Despite medical care, more prisoners began to succumb to measles, mumps, and pneumonia. A May 1st letter written by Assistant Quartermaster J.A. Potter described the soldiers of the 19th Wisconsin as undisciplined, inexperienced, and poorly equipped to guard such a volume of prisoners. He expressed disappointment in hospital conditions, noting that of the 1,200 prisoners held at Camp Randall, some 200 were hospitalized with illness. Barely a month after their arrival at Camp Randall, the Confederate inmates had to relocate. 
President Abraham Lincoln's call for a larger fighting force drew the 19th Wisconsin Regiment back to battle. This rendered Camp Randall unsuitable for securely holding prisoners. By May 31, 1862, the majority of Camp Randall inmates left for Camp Douglas, a larger encampment in Chicago. All that remains from this chapter of history is a small wooden structure along Monroe Street referred to as the Guardhouse. Drab and unassuming, this quaint wooden shanty sits sheltered under a compact metal pavilion. The structure dates to Camp Randall's Civil War period, but the details of its construction and location are uncertain. What remains today is reconstructed from a larger original building which is likely used as a detention facility for soldiers. Whether this housed captive Confederates or if it was exclusively served as a disciplinary holding cell for Union soldiers, that's unclear. A Madison citizen purchased the structure at auction when the war ended. No exact records of the structure exist beyond this event, but the building reappeared at Camp Reno Memorial Park at some point between 1914 and 1936, a lasting relic of Madison's Civil War history. By June, the last of the Camp Randall prisoners had left. The only ones who still remain in Madison are 140 Confederate soldiers who died during their stay at Camp Randall. The roughly 140 who died in Madison from battlefield injuries are buried at the northernmost Confederate cemetery in the United States. Initially grouped into a mass grave, the dead were later given their own headstones in a more formal organized plot now known as Confederate Rest. The plot is well shaded and removed from the more populated areas of the cemetery, a quiet and somber reminder of an unsung chapter of Madison history.